As a veteran player from the InfDev days, I've sunk a lot of hours into this game. While I've enjoyed survival for years, I found hard difficulty lacking as I got better at the game. Combined with changes to the core mechanics of the game, this issue eventually led me to use command blocks to augment my vanilla experience. With the release of data packs, I'm now able to share my expert mode with all of you. Here, you'll find time cards to each section of this guide. Please skip around if you need to, and enjoy the data pack. Welcome to the crafting portion of this guide. This is the Enchant Golden Apple recipe. This actually used to be in the game until Mo Yang removed it. Instead of searching through dungeon chests, you can create the apple if you have the resources to spare. Next up is the Totem of Undying. This recipe offers an alternative to the Woodland Mansions if you have the skills to kill the Ender Dragon repeatedly. Now, turning Nether Wart blocks back into Nether Wart isn't exactly expert mode material, but it's such a small change that really should be part of the vanilla experience, so I snuck it into the data pack regardless. And here's the good stuff. Armor tier progression and craftable chainmail armor. All armor pieces follow the same exact layout, you just have to use the previous tier of armor and the corresponding materials. Chainmail can be crafted from iron bars, not to be confused with iron ingots, as shown here. The chest plates of each tier are unique in the fact that they require an additional item to progress. This creates and reinforces certain milestones to be met before you advance. This was created to balance the rest of the data pack, with armor set bonuses in mind. While you could rush to get diamond armor within your first hour in, you need to naturally progress throughout the game to complete the armor set. Chain Mile requires magma cream, meaning that you need to construct a nether portal to using buckets or acquire a diamond pickaxe. To progress to an iron chest plate, you need to venture into the depths of the ocean to slay guardians and craft a sea lantern. To create a golden chest plate, you need to get a Totem of Undying. While it's possible to fight the Ender Dragon, you're probably going to end up exploring a Woodland Mansion for this quest. And finally, for Diamond Armor, the last upgrade requires a Lone Dragon Egg. Here are two other recipes for armor, which can be used for every tier. Leather Armor, however, has a normal recipe. These two recipes I'll cover more during the thirst portion of the video, but these are the shapeless crafting recipes for the clean water bottle and the fresh water bottle, respectively. Hello, and welcome to the difficulty tweaks portion of this video. Slimes have been trained to jump far, hit hard, and are immune to fall damage. They become formidable foes in the swamp, or in a slime chunk if you're in their sights. Uh, blazes will periodically light the ground on fire. Be sure to put it out to collect those blaze rods. Skeletons now wear thorn mail armor. This makes picking fights with them more strategic. Drowned now wear turtle helmets. This makes the fact that they attack turtle eggs that much more depressing. Magma cubes spread magma blocks in the nether. Watch your step, and be careful when they attack in numbers. Phantoms inflict blindness when they attack. Using shaders is highly recommended with this, but not explicitly required. Look at the spectral arrow buff for a counter to this. Silverfish cause massive infestations in stone. Careful what blocks you mine. The video for this example is quite long, so feel free to skip ahead.
Gassed fireballs are stronger. Armor set bonuses are recommended, along with blast protection. Gas are also resistant to all forms of damage. Wood the skeleton attacks are stronger. Not for the faint of heart, this is expert mode. The Horde. Zombies may attract other zombies when attacked. This means you'll want to kill them in as few attacks as possible, or just run. Iron tools and above are recommended. This clip is fairly long, but shows an example of how zombies can group up if attacked with the unnecessary means to kill them. If you're not careful, hordes can actually grow in size to defeat even the strongest of players. Another thing to note, as you see in the video, hordes can destroy torches. Be sure to keep your world lit up safely. Endermen carry a lone obsidian round with them. They can only place it down once per life. Spiders are invisible, but still recognizable by their glowing red eyes. Polar bears aren't pushovers. Don't mess with them, especially next to their cubs. Creepers are silent stalkers and don't make noise until it's too late. Witches can cast short-range magic attacks. Don't let them heal back to full. And lastly, here are some honorable mentions. Vexes briefly apply levitation, making evoker fights harder. I recommend Golden Apples. Evokers are tougher, the Wither is tougher, and bats no longer are passive mobs, and they can bite when close. They also have a 20% chance to drop a random seed when you kill them. Almost forgot, there's also the damage tint. As you get hurt, you will also experience a redness around your screen and your vision. As your health gets lower, this will become more apparent. So this is the maximum tint, although I'm healing now. And this is it going away. Welcome to the buffing and balancing tweaks portion of this video. To start off with, iron golems regenerate health over time. This helps villagers from getting overrun by the horde. It's also a very helpful tool for any player who can spare 4 blocks of iron. All armor sets now carry a bonus if you wear the full set. Leather armor grants you 2 hearts, chainmail grants you 4 hearts, iron armor grants you 6 hearts, golden armor grants you 8 hearts, and diamond armor grants you 10 extra hearts. Elytra also count as each armor set, so no bonuses are lost if you want to fly. Beacons prevent mob spawning within a 128 block radius. This provides an end game solution to lighting up areas. Grass paths now provide a small speed buff to all entities. Lastly, Spectral Arrows one hit KO phantoms. Think of Light Arrows from the Legend of Zelda series. A fully operational thirst system in Minecraft without any mods. Let me know if the mechanics need any tweaking. The GUI for your thirst is very minimal, so it doesn't impact the gameplay. You can check your thir current thirst level by holding a water bottle or empty glass ball in your main hand. 
There are seven possible levels of thirst in the following order and effect. Thoroughly hydrated, hydrated, and sated all allow you to regenerate health normally. When you are thirsty, you cannot regenerate health normally. Potions, beacons, and golden apples will still work, however. When you're parched, you cannot regenerate health normally, and you are slowed. When you are dehydrated, you cannot regenerate health normally, you are slowed, and you have mining fatigue. And finally, when you're withered, you cannot regenerate health normally, you are slowed, you have mining fatigue, and you are withering away. The whole system is pretty lenient for time management, while offering consequences dire enough to warrant heed. The first three levels act as a buffer before bad effects start happening. Each level, without any drinking, lasts for about two and a half minutes. It takes 16 minutes from well hydrated, or renamed thoroughly hydrated, to get to withered. This allows for uninterrupted exploration without the need to carry a shulker full of water bottles around. However, you get thirsty twice as fast in the nether. Speaking of which, you should probably know that you can create bitter drinks to quench your thirst. Hopefully you don't go around drinking water from just anywhere. Water bottles from any water source in the world will provide the lowest amount of water. You can clean your water by crafting your water bottle with a torch. This clean water bottle will provide twice the potency of normal water. You can combine an empty bottle with a snow block to get fresh water with double potency of clean water. In future updates, I'll be looking to add juices into the game, which would provide a food aspect for your hunger bar as well. Thanks for listening to my guide. Be sure to check out the Planet Minecraft post for more information such as future updates or bug reports and how to fix them.